Pleased to meet you. Um, so you have a few minutes for presenting the data and we can ask questions afterwards. Okay, great. Is this working? Can you hear me? Okay, so my name is Mirakia Kluski from the United States, and uh, the purpose of the study was the minimum clinically important inclusion and the patient acceptable symptom state and vast diet and vast feet for patients with ankylosing spondylitis. Briefly, the NCII in the past are clinically relevant measures that talk about the patient symptom state. The objective of the study was to find uh, cutoff values for NCII in past in vast diet and vast feet for patients with ankylosing spondylitis. We used a multinational cohort, and patients were asked to answer external input questions. For past, patients were asked about their current symptom state and whether or not they considered this to be acceptable for the rest of their lives. Those patients that answered acceptable were included for the analysis for past. For MCII, we asked patients to consider their symptoms at the beginning of the study compared to their symptoms currently and whether or not they had experienced improvement. Those patients that considered their improvement to be minimal and moderate were included in the analysis for MCII. We use the 75th percentile approach to determine the cutoff values. So I'd like to bring you to the results. For the PATH in vast diet, we consider the value of 4.1 to be a patient acceptable symptom state. And for vast V, we consider the value of 3.8 to be a patient acceptable symptom state. For a change to be considered clinically important in the vast diet, the absolute improvement was a 0.7 and a relative improvement of 16.7. For a clinically, improvement, clinically important change in the vast V, we considered an absolute value of 0.4 and a relative change of 11.4%. We also stratified for age, disease duration, median age, as well as HIV 27 status, country, and presence or history of spa extra articular manifestations. What we found was none of those things changed analysis. However, in fast diet, for disease duration below the median, we found that patients considered an acceptable state at 3.5 which was lower than those patients in the higher group that considered the acceptable state at 4.4. We also found that for an MCII in the vast diet, those patients with a lower disease duration considered an important improvement of 0.8 versus 0.5 in the higher disease duration group. In the vast view, we didn't see any change in the MCI, between the MCII groups. However, age and the disease duration seem to change the values a little bit, where patients at a lower age were considered acceptable at a lower value for PATH, and those patients at a higher age and higher disease duration were considered an acceptable state at a higher value. So, basically, in conclusion, the development of these disease specific criteria using the outcome measurements of FAST and FAST B allowed clinicians and researchers to dichotomize patients into groups that are success for intervention and not based on a patient's subjective feeling. However, the stratified results do suggest that patients with a longer disease duration may have possibly developed some sort of acceptable condition which is higher than those patients in a lower disease duration state, and these conditions should be taken into consideration when defining the success of intervention versus not. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so um, do you think that um, these cutoff values are it needs to be study or cohort specific, or do you think that they are so broad that you can actually use them and say, okay, this uh, this cutoff that you found here can be used in other trials without doing all the validation that you did here, or do you think that uh, they are so varying that you cannot really use them because they are varying as you described? Uh, what would your be conclusion would be, or would there be some? Uh, would you be able to say in this kind of cohort you would do this, and in this cohort or do you do that? Or do you need to do it all, you can say, before you start something in a different cohort? Okay. Um, so I think that for the values for PASS, because we do say there's a difference between disease duration, I'm not so sure if these are relevant values to use because when you're doing a study, you don't want to have to dichotomize your patients to see if an acceptable state is dependent on how long you've had the disease. So that reason, because I do see that the minimum clinically important improvement is slightly more stable across the groups, that perhaps we should focus on that in defining success as intervention or not, rather than bringing a patient to an acceptable state. And I also think maybe from a patient perspective that not each patient goes into any sort of therapy with ex expecting to achieve remission or an acceptable state for the rest of their lives. Perhaps they're just looking to have improvement or change, and maybe that's how we define success from a subjective level.
nice to have some some limits to say, well, it should mean more. We should be treated below that limit, but it actually may not fit with other recommendations that to treat to Right. Well, I think that if we consider patients, we can consider them as far as from a clinical standpoint or from a symptomatic standpoint. And for patients, I think it's also important to consider that we may not achieve disease regression. However, perhaps we can get the patients to feel better. And in that sense, we need to have a way of addressing that condition in the patient by having these validated measures that look specifically at the individual patient level of success versus you know, an arbitrary value of a change of two in a, in a mean of a study population. So I think that for the patient level, I think this is important. yet correlated this with the ASTAS measures. Basically, this is just for mass diet mass to currently. I know that for ASTAS, the clinically important change is 1.1. However, the scale is different. So it's hard to compare because that also takes into consideration more objective values. And I think the purpose of the PAS and the purpose of this is to not take into consideration what's happening at the, at the objective and at the, you know, any sort of measurements we're doing from a lab or for any sort of imaging. It's more to focus on how does the patient actually feel. They might feel better, but the imaging might look worse, or that might not be their goal. So I think it's important to take both things into consideration. More questions? No, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that's the last one. If anybody else wants, I can send. Good luck. You're very lucky. Thank you. Smile.